Yes, hi. Hi, everyone. So as, uh, as Thomas said, uh, uh, our lab uh, has a long-standing interest in uh, um, the treatment of primary immunodeficiency disorders. Those are uh, uh, intrinsic genetic disorders of the immune function that lead to absence of one or more blood cell types or to the presence of uh, blood cell types that do not function. So children are susceptible to frequent infections, and this can lead to death in infancy in the most severe forms. The diseases have similar symptoms, but different underlying causes, and over um, 300 causative genes have been identified. Just to remind you that all blood cells derive from hematopoietic stem cells. And so no matter which genetic defect you have, can be cured by uh, replacing the hematopoietic stem cells with, a, in, with an healthy one, and this is uh, what is called hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, or nowadays by <clears throat> actually correcting the patient's own hematopoietic stem cell ex vivo. So this is ex vivo gene therapy, uh, where we uh, take uh, uh, hematopoietic stem cells from the bone marrow or the uh, mobilized blood uh, of a patient, and then uh, we culture those cells uh, in, uh, in, the in the laboratory, where we add a, a, a viral vector usually um, to insert uh, a, the missing gene into the cells, and then the cells are given back to the patients, where they home again in the bone marrow and uh, give rise to uh, healthy blood cells for a lifetime. So, so far, this gene addition has used uh, uh, retroviral vectors, and uh, nowadays we are mainly using lentiviral vectors. And there are a uh, few trials showing uh, very um, exciting results uh, for many PIDs. Uh, however, especially early trials have uh, also highlighted the pitfall of this uh, technique. And uh, more importantly, uh, the fact that uh, uh, those uh, uh, retroviral vectors have a, a semi-random nature of integration, so they are prone to insertion and mutagenesis. Uh, and also, it's quite difficult to, to um, reach a physiological uh, level of the expression of the gene. So gene editing uh, nowadays can actually counteract those uh, problems. And uh, uh, basically, we can use a, an endonuclease, and nowadays we are using quite a lot of the CRISPR-Cas system to create a double strand break in a, a chosen locus, and then harness the uh, homologous recombination machinery of the cells to insert in this uh, locus a, a gene of interest that has been delivered with a non-integrating viral vectors. And for hematopoietic stem cells, we are mainly using adeno-associated viral vectors. I'm going to show you some preliminary data on the, the genome editing uh, for uh, one of those PIDs uh, called the X-linked agamma global anemia, or XLA. This is an antibody deficiency. Uh, XLA affects one in 200,000 live birth and is caused by mutations in a gene called the Bruton tyrosine kinase that is important in B cell development. Uh, in fact, uh, B cells uh, start their development in the bone marrow. And at the stage of a pre B cell, they express what is called precursor B cell receptor, uh, which signals through BTK to progression uh, to maturation into immature B cells. And uh, so um, patients have uh, uh, absence BTK or a non-functional BTK. And this leads to um, the, the stop in the, in the development of the cells at the previous cell stage. And so patients have absent B cells in the blood and no detectable immunoglobulins. And this leads to severe and life-threatening infections. So uh, the mainstay of infection prevention is uh, immunoglobulin replacement therapy, uh, which uh, um, mainly stabilizes the patients. But this uh, um, treatment is quite expensive, and uh, some patients suffer uh, complications, uh, such as uh, uh, um, sinopulmonary infections, chronic inflammatory bowel disease, a high incidence of uh, bronchiectasis, and so experience uh, long and frequent hospitalization times that really impact on their quality of life. So scientists are now developing gene therapy for XLA. But one thing we need to remember when thinking about uh, doing a, a lentiviral, for example, gene addition uh, um, strategy for this disease is that uh, uh, too little BTK expression may not restore B lymphopoiesis. And on the other hand, too much uh, uh, BTK expression carries the risk of oncogenesis, 
so it can lead to cancer. And BTK expression is highly regulated during the cell development. So how to uh, achieve this uh, um, physiological regulation by gene editing? So um, our, our uh, um, strategy is to use uh, a, a Cas9 ribonucleoprotein complex to create a double strand break in the early exon of uh, BTK in exon 2, and then uh, to um, use AAV6 to deliver the donor template, which is mainly the whole uh, codon-optimized BTK gene from exon 2 onwards, containing also a strong COSAC sequence and a piece of intron 18, which uh, has been shown in other papers to, uh, for other genes, uh, that the last intron is quite important for uh, um, uh, recognition of the polyadenylation site, so for uh, uh, termination of RNA. So to check if uh, uh, we could restore physiological levels of expression, we used a B cell line called the DG75. Uh, this is a Burkitt lymphoma cell line. And uh, we knocked out uh, BTK um, in this cell line using uh, the CRISPR-Cas system, but this time targeting uh, exon 3. And uh, then we derived clones. And as you can see um, by the image analysis, uh, um, which is reported in the histogram in the bottom, uh, the, all the clones have a very similar level of BTK expression if compared to uh, wild type, for example. Um, so, the, the, um, more importantly, jerkat T cells, which do not normally express BTK as the primary T cells, continue not to express BTK even if they have inserted our. Uh, um, integrated uh, transgene and uh, underneath uh, there is an in and out PCR to check for integration. We then move on uh, uh, to try our protocol in those hematopoietic stem cells, uh, which are called CD34 cells from uh, donors. And uh, uh, so the protocol uh, sees an activation of cells for two days and then uh, the electroporation of uh, a high fidelity Cas9 complex with uh, a um, chemically modified guide RNA. And then 15 minutes uh, later, the uh, transduction with AAV6. And, and this time uh, we um, used uh, um, a reporter cassette uh, uh, gene, which is a green, green fluorescence protein, to readily identify the, the cells uh, with the uh, integrated event uh, by just looking at the GFP percentage. Also, uh, the levels of um, uh, CAT, so the, the, um, the levels of indels were uh, studied by tide analysis and the viability has been reported. So uh, these are uh, um, uh, data from three different donors. And as you can see, the index percentage is pretty high for all the donors. That means that the cut is efficient. Viability is also between uh, 60 to 80% between the donors. And the GFP um, percentage is uh, around uh, um, 40%. And we need to remember that uh, in XLA, there is a selective advantage. So this level of correction will be uh, beneficial. We then tried our gene editing protocol, uh, in, again, in LT donors with the BTK cassette, which is a, a bigger cassette. And uh, we see uh, with uh, this cassette a bit uh, um, less viability especially if looking at day five, and we now know it's important to, to actually look at viability at a later time point rather than day two, because day two could be misleading. And uh, we see a, a quite a variable HDR, but uh, on and all, uh, all the, um, uh, the percentage of integration ranges between 30 to 60% in some donors. Um, we showed our results to XLA patients that, uh, who were quite excited about our research and decided to donate their cells. And uh, um, we uh, optimized in vivo, in vitro, a, a B cell differentiation protocol, um, which is a, a feeder free uh, culture protocol, where we put our CD34 cells in the presence of IL6 for one week. Um, and then we uh, put the cells on uh, ICAM coated plates in the presence of IL-7 for another week. 
And by week two, we should start having uh, privy cells in the culture that uh, are uh, independent on IL-7. So we can uh, remove uh, cytokines and then let the cells grow for further uh, two, three weeks uh, where we can find actually now immature B cells as the final CD10 positive, CD19 positive and IgM. And just to remind you, this is the uh, development block developmental block seen in, 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 in XLA. So um, we have performed our gene editing protocol in one XLA patient, and I'm gonna show you now the uh, in vitro B cell differentiation with those cells. And if you focus on the uh, CD19 positive and CD10 positive gate, um, you will see that uh, um, this uh, gate gets populated more and more during the weeks for an LT donor sample. And then uh, and a week four, uh, this gate is, uh, um, contains a lot of privy cells that can also express IgM. So they, those are properly immature B cells. And um, while uh, if you look at the, uh, at the plots underneath, so if you look at the, uh, the XLA patients, there are no immature B cells. And now you can appreciate that uh, uh, gene editing is able to rescue the B cell differentiation defect in these patients, as the plots, the fax plots are much more similar to a, a, an LT donor situation. Um, only one month ago, we could uh, put some error bars. Uh, we had the second patient donating the cells and uh, the viability between the patients, uh, between the, the, in the two patients are pretty, is pretty similar. Uh, the gene editing protocol does not affect uh, the um, ability to form colonies of, uh, of HSC cells. And, uh, and here again is to tell you that uh, in both patients, we can finally see immature B cells. And so that tells us that the gene editing relieves the block uh, in uh, maturation in, in both patients. So uh, now we have uh, uh, nice tools. And, uh, and so we have a, a strong proof of concept. And Alessia uh, is going to show you how to take a proof of concept to, to, uh, to clinical application. So I will stop sharing. Okay, thank you. Uh, what I was, I was just saying is that uh, we design, uh, um, our um, lab is focused on uh, designing gene editing strategy to treat Wiscotodget syndrome, which is another uh, primary immunodeficiency. And we do so by using a very similar approach to what George has already showed you. Uh, so we aim to knock in a functional gene, uh, in this case for Wiscotodget syndrome is the WAS gene, into its own locus to um, make sure we have endogenous re regulated expression of the gene. So to do so, we have designed guide RNA uh, to exon 1 of WAS and introduced the gene uh, with an AV6 donor vector. So this has been published already, the proof of concept study uh, last year, and we show high feasibility and efficacy of the system. So what we wanted to do next is to make sure that um, from proof of concept study, we are able to translate this platform into uh, a clinical setting. This will be um, health, helpful also to establish a platform to translate gene editing technology in a much wider range of HC disorders, like for example, XLA as just presented by Georgia. So to do so, what we uh, plan to do is to optimize uh, HSPC gene editing protocols uh, to current uh, GMP compliant uh, standards. Then we aim to scale up the gene editing protocol for clinical readiness in order to mimic what will happen in a clinical setting. Uh, we also want to assess the functionality of these cells that are large uh, scale manipulated in vitro. And then, of course, uh, we want to evaluate the toxicity of the procedure um, in vitro and, uh, and in vivo. So to do so, first of all, we needed to move all our research grade reagents into clinical grade reagents. Uh, so we first designed a clinically compliant AV6 uh, donor vector by introducing a canamycin resistance chain in the vector backbone in place of the ampicillin one and also shortening the uh, homology arms to facilitate detection of the knocking cassette in vivo. Uh, we tested uh, these vectors in, in, in vitro in HSPCs. We couldn't detect any difference in HDR uh, compared to research grade um, uh, reagents. 
and also to match the plan clinical manufacturing process, um, we really need to move to clinical grade uh, reagents and cell culture, cell culture and gene editing reagents, especially for the HIFI Cas9 and in the guide RNA. And so uh, we, we use those reagents and we show that HDR rates are stable even when using clinical grade reagents. Um, given the high costs of the reagents required for large scale manufacturing of HCs, uh, we tested decreasing doses of RMP and cell concentration from product manufacturing, and we found optimal and constant HDR rates when halving the amount of RMP um, uh, used uh, in the proof of concept study. And lastly, we, uh, we wanted to test a GMP compliant max site flow electroporator system, which allows scalable cell electroporation. And we demonstrated uh, compar comparable uh, and reproducible rates of targeted integration, uh, up to 65% of the cells, um, when using uh, the clinical grade uh, max site electroporator with minimal toxicity compared to the technologies that we use in small scale in proof of concept study, and also compared to unmanipulated cells. So uh, having established uh, a clinical grade GMP protocol, uh, we wanted to move forward and scale up uh, the whole platform. So we purchased a Ferris's products of uh, Plerixa, Plerixa for mobilized peripheral blood, and we uh, freshly enriched for C34 positive cells, either, ma either manually or with an automated Clinimax prodigy system. Uh, we processed five aphorisms so far uh, with um, great results in terms of viability and CD34 positive purity. Then um, we uh, once purified these cells of culture for two days, and then at day two, cells are collected. They undergo gene correction protocol adapted for large scale manufacturing. And then the final product is harvested at day four for quality testing, such as viability, editing efficiency, uh, and genotoxicity analysis. Then a small portion of the product is kept in culture for further two days, for, for the two weeks, sorry, uh, for time course analysis of gene editing and genotoxicity, uh, while the majority is then cryopreserved and then again defrosted, QC analyzed, and then transplanted into animals to mimic a potential clinical process. Um, so here I will show the results that we obtained so far. Uh, so we managed to uh, successfully integrate the WASP gene in roughly 60% of CD34 positive stem cells when um, editing an average of 150 million of cells, so in large scale, and up to 75% when editing in medium scale, meaning an average of 5 million of cells per run. HDR rates were stable throughout the in vitro culture and also in cryopreserved product after defrosting and upon infusion into animals. And also in the rates were very high, up to 95% and stable in vitro. Concerning toxicity, uh, gene editing process showed minimal toxicity at a large scale. We have more than 80% of cell viability before, uh, both before and after cryopreservation of the product, and we see negligible differences compared to unmanipulated controls. Importantly, all groups are able to give rise to colonies in CFU assays without lineage skewing, and most importantly, without any difference in terms of numbers of colonies among the groups, indicating that cells are still able uh, to repopulate. Uh, so to sum up this part and demonstrate the feasibility of our, our manufacturing process, we compare our results with the batch release criteria set by our GMP at UCL for the release of gene therapy products. And we uh, show that we are able to meet and actually exceed all key criteria of a good product. After this, uh, we wanted to test the ability of these manufacturer large scale products to engraft long term and reconstitute hematopoiesis. So to this aim, edited hematopoietic stem cells um, are uh, injected intravenously into sublethally irradiated NSG mice. And then uh, we evaluated bulb marrow human chimerism, targeted integration in the frequencies of targeting uh, in the hematopoietic compartment at 16 weeks post transplantation. As shown in this table, we have treated a total of 50 mice transplanted with 250 million of cells to mimic what would happen in a clinical setting if we were to transplant these cells into WAS, uh, into uh, anyway, into uh, children affected by PID. 
So here is the results of the in vivo data uh, of mice transplanted with large scale manufactured cells. Um, overall, um, RMP only and was edited cells show robust engraftment capacity uh, with a median human chimerism in the bone marrow around 40% for edited cells. So while the engraftment rate is slightly decreased compared to unmanipulated cells in the bone marrow, we can see comparable, if not higher, engraftment in the periphery. When they're looking at the bone marrow, the human graft was multi-lineage, uh, consisted mostly of B cells and myeloid cells, as usually seen in these mice. And when looking at the stem cell compartment in the bone marrow, we can see comparable chimerism among the groups of stem cells and more primitive stem cells. Lastly, we also sorted human uh, engrafted cells in the bone marrow, and we detected 15 to 20% of cells harboring a corrected noctin cassette after uh, 12 weeks of transplantation. So last but not least, actually very important, uh, we wanted to, what, one main aim of the preclinical study is to assess safety of gene editing. We all know that one potential risk of gene editing is introduction of unwanted genetic modification that may in turn lead to the development of malignancy. So uh, we really wanted to take a comprehensive approach uh, for evaluating the safety and the toxicity of the gene editing strategy using a combination of sequencing based analysis and um, pathology assays. Um, so um, what we did, so cells were manipulated and then were edited again, and uh, some of them were kept in culture and some of them were transplanted into mice. So concerning the in vitro part, we performed off-target analysis soon after the editing process at day four, and then again at day 14. And at these time points, we also collected samples for karyotyping to detect gross chromosomal rearrangement, and uh, also to determine the impact of gene editing on cell fitness, we also performed global gene expression measurement by RNA-seq. At day 21, we also performed CAS-seq analysis to uh, check for chromosomal rearrangements, and also um, ITR-seq to detect AAV integration genome-wide. The same analysis were performed at the end of the transplantation on sorted human cells. And we also uh, wanted to um, detect, to do a histopathology analysis to detect signs of toxicity in the animals due to the gene editing procedure. So sampling and off-target analysis at different time points, um, especially after transplantation, allow us to identify not only the presence of of unwanted genetic modification in the product, but also to analyze the functional relevance of these of targeting, such as their effect in, effect in uh, positive or negative selections of cells bearing specific of target modifications, the potential of developed malignancies, or exact a clonal dominance effect. Um, so uh, for the off-target analysis, we focus our attention on a group of predetermined off-target sites that we preliminary screen in our proof of concept uh, study in small scale. So we indeed select screen 15 predicted off-target sites uh, in WASP patient cells samples, um, and we selected one site out of 15, which gave a very low frequency of indels in just one HSPC donor source. In parallel, we also perform uh, unbiased genome-wide guide seek analysis, and we retrieve a, a total of six sites, which have been added to the pool of sites to be screened in the large-scale products. So we perform deep sequencing on genomic DNA extracted from large-scale gene edited cells at day four, and we could not detect any of target cutting and any of the sites analyzed when compared to unmanipulated cells. The same analysis was also performed at A14 um, after in vitro culture. And again, we could not detect any unwanted genetic modification, further confirming the safety of the platform and an absence of any growth advantage of in those bearing cells in vitro. We also performed cas seq analysis to check for uh, gross chromosomal rearrangement and translocations. And again, we could not detect any uh, major modification. These results were also backed up by uh, a preliminary karyotype uh, analysis that we performed in these cells. Last, um, concerning um, the genotoxicity in vivo, much of this part is currently ongoing, so I can't give you a complete view of the results today, but what we have observed so far is that off-target analysis on human cells extracted from the bone marrow of transplanted mice return no indels at the sites analyzed. Further confirming the accuracy of the in vitro analysis, 
uh, but also the absence of any selective advantage on, uh, on cells bearing unwanted mutations. From a toxicology point of view, uh, no mice experience weight loss after bone marrow conditioning and transplantation, and, and overall, all mice gain weight regularly and survive until the end of the experiment. And moreover, hematological analysis show that the count, total count of blood cells were similar between groups, suggesting absence of major toxic effects. And hopefully this will be confirmed by the pathology analysis on bone marrow smears, as well as spleen sections that we, uh, we are performing now. So to conclude, uh, we have shown that large-scale manufacturing of hematopoietic stem cells um, is feasible, with more than 60% of not cane of the cassette and more than 80% of viability in our case when targeting uh, WAS gene, um, uh, maintaining the same efficiency that we actually obtain in a small-scale proof-of-concept study. We also show that manipulated cells retain their ability to repopulate the bone marrow of recipient mice and that there's no evident toxicity so far, as well as no off-targeting activity. And we are now, uh, since uh, we, we would like to see the toxicity of the platform in a disease model that recapitulates uh, the Wiscotogic syndrome disease, we will repeat efficacy and safety studies in a humanized WAS knockout model where we are actually replacing the WAS murine locus with a human WAS locus. And this will allow to test our genetic reagents already um, uh, tested, I mean, already used for human locus into a relevant mouse model of the disease. So last, I want to thank also on behalf of Georgia, all the people that were uh, involved in my team and in Georgia's team, uh, especially uh, Asman Azim, Wisdom Vetaroy, Rajiv Rai, and Samir Bahal, uh, especially for the XLA part. Uh, a big thank, thank to the GMP facility in, in our institute that made possible the scale up and preclinical assessment of our genetic platform. A big thank to the funders and a big thank uh, for, to all of you for, for listening to us today.